is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is Chris Abraham, the Chris Abraham Show, season five, episode 41. And I'm doing walkies. And because yesterday was so intense and and crazy and uh, about Stephanie that I thought I would make it a little bit more chillax and more general. I'm a... Watching a little bit of this TV show, season nine of Alone, it's on Netflix, because I don't have the History Channel. It's pretty awesome, and uh, there was one guy there named Jacques, I think, Jacques, and he uh, bailed after like two or three days, because he was, he he wondered what he was challenging himself for when his, uh, his girlfriend and his dog made his life happy every day. And I hated to say, I mean, it was sweet, right? It was sweet. But, like, here are my thoughts. My thoughts are as follows. Firstly, there it's a competition. So it's not like he just went out to challenge himself in uh, the Labrador forest with no goal in mind. His goal was to win five hundred thousand dollars which could really help him his family and all the therapy he needs based on how terrible his growing up was so also a hundred to 120 days is nothing in the uh in well mind you jacques is 23 22 23 so um it's very interesting right it's a little very interesting in a world of perspective because I have What are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just happened to be in like the area where this guy was trying to park and so very funny thought I was being stalked uh so yeah it was very sweet and I'm hoping that he also felt really bad about killing a squirrel <clears throat> and he said that if he were in a group he'd feel better about it and whatever 23 right I mean He might not ever get an opportunity like this again. And I hope, see, my skeptical world of, like, this revealed something about me, right? It revealed that the gift that I would have of leaving after two or three days because I missed my dog and my girlfriend so much and went home to them would not be enough of a love bomb and a show of like selflessness and devotion to my small little family as uh, being a pussy and like potentially losing our young family half a million dollars, right? So it's, it's similar to the way I feel about kids who go home on camp because they miss their mommy too much, right? Like I haven't... Even though he touched my heartstrings, and I totally appreciate the fact, since I grew up with uh, two alcoholic parents uh, in a very kind of bullying world as a as a Howley kid in Hawaii, I still feel like you know you got to man up and 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 you got to do you got to complete the mission, right? So. On one hand, I find it like my empathetic, like I've been pursuing empathy this year. 
both for myself and for others. And I've also been pursuing like, like, like rigorous kindness, uh, both to myself and to others and forgiveness for myself and others, like rigorous, like all I think about is that. And that Chris really loved the fact that this young man realized he has everything he wanted. And ever since he's been with his girlfriend and his dog, he hasn't, that's when his good memories began. Now, if this guy were a soldier, he wouldn't be able to just quit three days in, right, on deployment. Um, he might be able to wash out if you were going out for something like Buds or boot camp or whatever. But, um, and I know this is just TV and it's not real life and so forth. But on one hand, I feel such compassion for him that he knew that what he had right in front of him is what he wanted and needed more than anything. And that this challenge that he was putting himself through the fact that the money never came up made me believe that he never believed he would win the money or win. Um, it's not just a challenge like, uh, you know, my business partner, Mark, or someone like Raman or, or Andrew, my buddies would like just go off into the wilderness, like adventure bike, camping, disappear forever. And uh, for the challenge... There was no half a million dollars at the end of it, right? So, and then like the other side of me is like, will she ever perceive him as, will she start to see their relationship as something he will pull the cord on? Will she now feel, will she look at his behavior since he's only 23 Will she look at his behavior, pulling the ripcord? Will she perceive that as a character flaw, which is going to doom the relationship because she'll never be able to respect him or fully trust him again? Or did she miss him so much and that their family is so insular that she just wants him home so that they can start making beautiful Jacques babies? Um... Like, old Chris is like, fucking loser, pussy, freak. Uh, and new Chris is like, oh man, I really loved being a universe of two. Like, there were times when I was with Stephanie, or when I was with Liz, or when I was with Michelle, or when I was with Georgina. Like, even Georgina, we never lived together. But like, even with Wendy, right? Like... There were times when I'm like, if I can extrapolate on this moment vis-a-vis -vis, um, uh, Groundhog Day, if I could live this day ad nauseum into immortality, not just for the remaining 50, 60 years at the time, I would do it, right? Uh, wake up in bed together. Uh take a shower, have some coffee, maybe a little breakfast, uh, have a little kiss, get dressed, go out to, into the world, um, meet up later, maybe have a drink, maybe have some dinner, uh, maybe order in, maybe watch some dumb TV, maybe go on a picnic, maybe visit a new restaurant, um, maybe go on a run in the morning or go on the run in the evening, maybe go to a gym together, um, with Betsy, a lot of those days were perfect. Like wake up in the morning, make some coffee, make some breakfast, go off to work, come back home, um, take trips to Paris, take trips to Florida, Miami, you know, um, um, one of the great experiences was like the perfect days included days where we were living together in, in South Arlington in, uh, 
in Pentagon City. Um, like even going to uh, ballet bar, going no, not ballet bar, going to biker bar and going into D.C. and taking spin classes together, right? Like if I had a partner who would want to take spin classes with me, like, you know, three, four times a week for the rest of my life, that would be smashing. If I had a partner that would like to go and encourage me to go to park run on Saturday and go with me, like that would be spectacular. So I can't diss him. Like when I was 23, would I want to spend a hundred days away from Stephanie? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, at least at first, until I became an idiot. So, so like, there's the conundrum, right? There's the conundrum of uh, suck it up, buttercup, cowboy up, half a million. Like, if you won that money, you know, the it would make things so much easier for that relationship, right? So, um, and for the future, and for having children, and for buying a house and for buying a car and for getting outfitted and for, you know, putting together a retirement plan or putting money aside for the future baby to have college money, you know, things like that. And definitely therapy for uh, what you perceived as a terrible childhood. You don't even have to ever think of yourself having a terrible childhood for therapy to be a good idea for a man. Um, but if you, if, if your entire narrative is what a shitty childhood you have and how fucking shitty your parents are and were like, that's a signifier that maybe you need a little bit of therapy or you need to go to Al-Anon. I recommend for Jacques, I recommend Jacques go to Al-Anon. That is the uh, that is a 12-step program for children of alcoholics, adult children of alcoholics, people who love alcoholics, partners of alcoholics, and all that kind of stuff. It teaches you things like, you know, how to deal with codependency and how to deal with issues of um, independence and and honestly... If you had gone to Al-Anon or therapy before this challenge, you would realize that being away for 120 days with the opportunity to win a half a million dollars um, is the healthy choice. It's the healthy choice. And that um, being so afraid that your, your relationship is not going to suffer those 120, 130 days, the fear that your relationship is so fragile that everything will come apart is really the kind of, uh, of, of damaged heart and damaged soul and general sadness that needs surely, surely needs to be addressed um, and will be addressed and can be addressed by Al-Anon and Alateen and, and, um, and therapy and learning how not to be codependent and learning how to stand on your own two feet and learning not to put the weight of the world of all of your happiness on the weight of a dog and a petite blonde woman. So I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from experience. Put a lot of pressure on my girlfriends over the years, a lot of expectation and all that fun stuff. So with that being said, I am within I ball range of Starbucks coffee and they have a, an espresso and some water for me and I uh, am listening to an interview with Greg Gutfeld on a podcast and I think it's very enjoyable I really like that show but I refuse to pay for I refuse to pay for um, cable or you know I refuse to pay like you know YouTube TV or Hulu TV or any of those other services that are like $75 plus in order to get that kind of uh, that kind of real-time 
kind of stuff. Um, anyway, talk to you soon. Thanks for walking me to Starbucks. And I love you. Aloha. This was Chris Abraham, Season 5, Episode 41. And I'll see you the next time. Ciao. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.